Hi everyone, I'm Lester Bird from Juniper Networks. I'm going to show you 400G line rate max sec on Juniper's newest modular chassis, the PTX 10008. Here's a standard disclaimer. As always, this presentation reflects current thought, but we can change direction in the future. We will generate 400G line rate traffic across a max sec link between two PTX 10008s. One of the PTXs runs JunoS Evolved, Juniper's modern cloud operating system. The other PTX 10008 runs Sonic, an open source NOS driven by the Open Compute project. We will show three different frame sizes, 66 bytes, 1000 bytes, and 9000 bytes. For all frame sizes, there will be no traffic loss, showing that the PTX 10008 can indeed do line rate max sec. For those of you curious why we picked 66 bytes instead of 64 bytes, this was an artifact of the tester. For some reason, it imposed a 66 byte minimum. Here's the test topology. There's a max sec link between the PTX 10008 running Juno S Evolved and the one running Sonic. We are using Ixia to generate bi-directional 400G line rate traffic. Before we get to the demo, we need to set some common background and nomenclature. There are five important statistics to look at. We define them here. First, we have efficiency. Efficiency is the percentage of the 400G bandwidth used to transfer Ethernet frames, but not including max sec octets. The layer 1 bitrate is the amount of the 400G bandwidth measured in gigabits per second used to transfer the Ethernet frames, again not including the max sec octet. When calculating the layer 1 bitrate, we consider the Ethernet preamble, the Ethernet frame, the inner packet gap, but not the max sec header. The transmission bitrate as seen in Juno S is called the Juno S bitrate. It is different than the layer 1 bitrate. It measures the amount of bandwidth used to transmit the Ethernet frame and the MACSEC header. Unlike the layer 1 bitrate, it does not include the Ethernet preamble nor the inner packet gap. The frame rate is just the number of Ethernet frames transmitted per second. And the frame loss percentage is the percentage of Ethernet frames lost crossing the MACSEC link during transmission. If we are indeed sending and receiving at 400G line rate, then the frame loss should always be 0%. Let's take a look at the MACSEC frame format. As you can see, the original Ethernet frame is encrypted into a secure payload. MACSEC also adds a security tag and an integrity check value, not shown as the Ethernet preamble and the inner packet gap. The preamble would precede the MACSEC frame, the internet packet gap would follow it. So let's start getting into the numbers. The first thing that we need to understand is the different components that contribute to the bit rates that we're going to look at. There's an ethernet preamble that is 8 octets and an inner packet gap that is 12 octets. These 20 bytes represent physical layer ethernet overhead. In our case, the MACSEC overhead is going to be 24 octets because we are not using the secure channel identifier. If we were to use the SCI, the MACSEC overhead would increase to 32 bytes. As we said before, we're going to be generating Ethernet frames of 66, 1000, and 9000 octets. The remaining fields are just additive combinations of the above information. For instance, L1 Ethernet is the Ethernet frame size plus the physical layer overhead of 20 bytes. Similarly, the L2 MACSEC size is just the original Ethernet frame size plus the 24 bytes of MACSEC overhead, and so forth. For the mathematically inclined, or those who don't like magic numbers, these are the formulas that calculate those key statistics. I'm not going to go over each one of them, but I encourage you to come back and look at these formulas after you watch the videos. They calculate the expected values. Note also the Ixia field names of these key statistics. We will be examining TXL1 load percentage, TXL1 rate, TX frame rate. The Juno S bit rate is taken from the show interfaces statistics command. It is not part of Ixia. For convenience, I've used the previous formulas to calculate the various statistics for different frame sizes. Notice how the efficiency increases from 78 to 97 to 99 percent as the packet sizes grow. Not shockingly, so do the L1 and Juno S bit rates. The L1 bit rate increases from 312 gigabits per second to 398 gigabits per second. The Juno S bitrate, which is calculated differently, grows from 327 gigabits per second to 399 gigabits per second. That's getting pretty close to our 400G. 
It is important to note that neither the L1 bitrate or the Juno OS bitrate will actually hit 400G because of overhead of sending the MAXAC header or the preamble or the inner packet gap. We can only get close to 400G. Conversely, frame rate drops as the packets get larger. This makes sense since a bigger packet takes longer to transmit. Due to factors like clock speeds, latencies when fetching statistics, and rounding errors, observed values may not perfectly match expected values. The observed values will be close to the expected values, but they may not be exact. In all cases, we utilize the entire 400G bandwidth. It's important to realize this. However, because we do not include all headers when calculating bit rates, neither the L1 bit rate nor the Juno S bit rate will ever reach 400G. Finally, efficiencies in bit rates improve as the frame sizes get bigger. Frame rates, however, decrease as the frame sizes get bigger, as we discussed previously. If we transmit jumbo frames, we see that the bit rates get close to 400G, which is expected. More of the bandwidth is being used to transmit the original Ethernet frame. Less of the bandwidth is dedicated to protocol overhead, like sending the MACSEC headers, the Ethernet preamble, and the inner packet gap. But by far, the most important thing is to see zero frame loss when sending at 400G line rate. If we're sending at line rate, we do not expect any lost packets. Okay, we're finally ready for the demo. We're currently logged into the system running Juno S Evolve. If we look at ET000, we can see that's a 400G Ethernet link. We've also set the MTU to jumbo frames. If we look at the MaxSec configuration, we can see that we're using a 256-bit cipher with extended packet numbering. We need XBN for high-speed links like 400G. We can also see that ET000 is set up to do MaxSec encryption. By looking at the MaxSec connections, we can see that encryption is indeed on and that we are not including the secure channel identifier. Finally, we can see that MKA, the MaxSec key agreement protocol, is running on ET000. Flipping to the Sonic side, we see that Ethernet 1 maps to ET000. It's a 400G link with jumbo frames configured. Juniper is one of the first Sonic vendors to ever support MaxSec. For MKA, we created a new MaxSec Docker container built around open source WPA Supplicant. When we look at the MaxSec configuration on the Sonic system, we can see that Cypher Suite number 3 indicates 256 bit XBN. We also note that SEI is not included here as well, just as it wasn't on the EBO side. If we execute WPA CLI, we can see that these parameters have indeed taken effect. And they do match the Juno S Evolve configuration. We can also see that MKA packets are being exchanged with the Juno S side. We're now on the Ixia 400G tester. I've already set up line rate traffic generation with a fixed size frame of 66 bytes. As you can see from the flashing icon, the frame loss is 0%. The L1 bit rate is 312 gigabits per second. The efficiency is 78%, and the frame rate is 454 million packets per second. If we go to the EVO side and look at the MaxSec statistics, we can see that the number of encrypted frames jumps from 222 to 241 billion frames. We can also look at the Juno OS bitrate, which we can see is 327 gigabits per second. The data for 66 byte frames was as expected. This is actually the hardest test because it has the greatest protocol overhead. Let's try a larger frame size, 1000 bytes. 
Note that we are still running at 400G line rate and the frame size is 1000 bytes. We start the traffic. As expected, the frame loss is still 0%. The L1 bit rate has now jumped to 390 gigabits per second. The efficiency has jumped to 97%. And the frame rate has dropped to 47 million packets per second. If we look at the Juno S bit rate on the Evo side, we see that it has jumped from 327 to 392 gigabits per second. Finally, we change the Ethernet frame size to 9000 bytes to test jumble frames. As you can see, we are still running at 400G line rate, and we're generating 9000 byte Ethernet frames. Starting the traffic, we check on the frame loss, and happily it's still at 0% loss. The L1 bit rate is now nearly 399 gigabits per second. The efficiency is now 99.7%. And the frame rate has dropped to 5 million frames per second. If we check the Juno S bit rate on the Evo, we see that it is now 399 gigabits per second as well. From this screenshot, we can see how the Juno S bit rate increases as the packet size increases. This is also true of the layer 1 bit rate if we track the Ixia data. Hopefully you notice the most important piece of information. At all three frame sizes ranging from 66 bytes to 9000 bytes, the PTX 10008 did not drop a single frame when doing max sec. There you go. The BT ASIC is the high performance networking engine that drives the PTX 10008 modular chassis. MaxSec is integrated natively into the ASIC. Unlike many competitors, Juniper MaxSec does not utilize external PHY devices. The BT ASIC can perform inline MaxSec for all packet sizes at 400G line rate. If MaxSec is not needed, BT can turn off the MaxSec block to reduce power consumption. Finally, Juniper MaxSec supports several ciphers, including GCM AES XPN 128 and GCM AES XPN 256. As you saw in this demo, we did the XPN 256 cipher. Say hello to Juniper's PTX 1008, a system that can meet all your 400G high speed networking needs. The heart of the system is the BTA SIC. The PTX 10008 can do 400G line rate max sec as you've seen. You get high speed link security without traffic loss. And finally, you can pick your NAS, Juno S Evolved or Sonic. The PTX 10008 supports both operating systems for maximum flexibility. Here are some references for the PTX 10008 and its big brother, the PTX 10016. I refer you to the product data sheet. We also have some OCP videos that we did showing Sonic running on the PTX 10008. I think you'll like those too. Please check out the PTX 10008 and enjoy the full power of 400G. Stay healthy and stay safe. Take care. Bye.